Finally, here's the Intel build we've been working on. Thanks to producing a new Intel 10 series overclocking Procast episode for MSI, we've got the MSI MEG Z490 Ace in the studio, which we really put through its paces. We were able to get some great performance gains in Cinebench versus the i9-9900K setup last year. Intel actually has four chipsets out to work with their 10th generation CPUs. None of the previous 100, 200, or 300 series will work as it's physically a different socket, socket LGA1200. If you plan to use the newest, fastest RAM, you need the Z490 chipset as Intel has locked out high-end memory overclocking. Uh, link up here for a great video where Linus addresses this. If you choose a H410, B460, or H470, DDR4 frequency is capped for i7 to i9 chips at 2933, and i3 to i5 to 2666 MHz. So if you're looking for the fastest Intel performance, you really need to be looking at the Z490 chipset for your new motherboard. Today, we'll check out the features and performances of MSI's MEG Z490 Ace. And if you decide to grab this board and buy through our affiliate links below, it does help us out a bit here, so thanks for your support. And just a reminder, if you want to keep up with our releases and occasional contests, you should follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. At Techspin, we always bring you honest testing and opinions about new tech, so you can make informed decisions about new gear. So how will this high-end motherboard fare? Let's find out. A quick summary. The MSI MEG Z490 Ace is an enthusiast offering, notably having best in tier VRM solution, which is perfect for overclocking, and features like steel armor for all the slots, um, it's SLI and Crossfire capable, has Lightning 20G USB uh, Type C, and what MSI is calling chest armor on the back, providing rigidity. A very good choice for a motherboard. MSI's latest MEG Z490 Ace motherboard has the newest Intel LGA 1200 socket supporting 10 series processors only. Retailing for $400 US, guessing about 340 British pounds, 565 Canadian, and about 11,900 NT in Taiwan. This ATX size six layer PCB design has a robust power solution. They're using an 8X Intersil digital PWM controller setup, feeding 16 of 90 amp smart power stages into 16 titanium choke threes for a 16 plus one phase solution. This ACE has triple M.2 Gen 3 NVMe slots at 32 gigabits a second transfer speed, all equipped with MSI's Shield Frozer heatsink solution. And there's a chest shield on the back, which acts to strengthen the board. In this high-end board, we expected to see steel armor, and it's here reinforcing all three Gen 3 PCIe slots, which can run 1604 or 884, a requirement of NVIDIA SLI, and Crossfire is also supported. The four DDR4 slots support 32 gig modules for up to 128 gigs at 2933 MHz. But with DDR4 boost, one or two sticks of DDR4 can overclock to a possible 4800 MHz with selected modules, and the slots have steel armor for your peace of mind. The rear IO shield top has more mystic light accents, but MSI has put some work in under the hood, with an integrated fan and heat pipe combo providing active VRM cooling when running at full load. The MSI MEG Z490 Ace uses dual A-pin ATX power connectors to provide steady power while overclocking, so just make sure that your power supply also has dual ATX A-pin. For connectivity, the rear panel is equipped with Wi-Fi 6, that's the 802.11ax spec, along with the Realtek 8125B 2.5 gigabit LAN and also Intel i219V gigabit LAN. It has a Lightning Type-C 20 gig, 3x of Gen 2 Type-A, two Gen 1 A's, and two USB 2.0. Note that there's no HDMI or DisplayPort. For audio, there's a Realtek ALC1220 along with an ESS Sabre Combo DAC, and this board supports DirectX 12. An MSI's Mystic Light shows through the ACE logo on the integrated rear I.O. shield, as well as part of the controller shield on the bottom right of the board. We tested this out with an AeroCool 1000 watt power supply, definitely more power than we need. You can get away with 700 or 800 watt PSU. Importantly, it has a dual ATX 8 pin to supply this hungry CPU when overclocking. So we have 32 gigs, that's two 16 gig sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX, the new version at 4600 MHz, and it also ships with this RAM cooler with interchangeable faceplates, which is useful at full overclock. Windows 10 Pro version 2004 is installed on the boot drive, which is an XPG 8200 Pro 256GB NVMe M.2 drive, 
and that inserts under the M2 shielding easily and the MEG Z490 ACE is using the latest available BIOS which is version 122 beta. On Graphics Duty is an MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X, and cooling is handled by a capable MSI Core Liquid 360R, a 360mm all-in-one water cooler. If you're doing overclocking on a 10900K, we recommend a 360mm RAD as the Intel 10th Gen gets super hot, super fast. Before the results, a quick reminder that if you want to connect with us online, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. And there's links below if you decide to grab a new motherboard. You can support the channel by using our affiliate links to buy. It'll help us out here with no extra cost to you. Please take a moment to like this video. And if you like what you see, then please do subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Doing overclocking on this board was pretty snappy and responsive with the BIOS and restarting, which made changing values and tweaking much less time intensive. For base results, we're seeing 2665 points in Cinebench R15 and 6390 in Cinebench R20. This is versus last year's i9-9900K, which has an R15 of 2044 and 4810 for Cinebench R20. Blender's BMW shows the 10900K posting 2 minutes 46 seconds, which is a full minute faster than the older CPU. This year we adopted Blender's Classroom in our test results and we got 8 minutes 54 seconds at stock, our 9900K coming in at 13 minutes 8 seconds. And there is headroom to drive it up to 5.2 GHz if you get a great CPU. Ours booted at 5.2 but was completely stable at 5.1 GHz. In R15 we got 2726 points and R20 obtained 6578 points, a bit of an improvement in both of these Cinebench tests. We shaved off 4 seconds in Blender's BMW, coming in at 2 minutes 42, and Classroom took a hair under 10 seconds less, and this is with the default RAM settings. With XMP on, the 4600 MHz RAM delivered a 2746 in R15, 6551 in R20, and a second and a half faster for BMW at 240, and 7 seconds faster in Classroom at 8 minutes 37 seconds. Of course, those pro overclockers out there will do better, so please drop a comment if we can tweak something to get even better numbers. Now taking a look at the motherboard, the overall design, it has a really nice design, I would say. Uh, it has a really good flow to the board. It kind of, yeah, like um, the uh, diagonals, like kind of like uh, gold uh, accent diagonals on the board too. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. And um, that all works in with the uh, VRM design. Um, I like, personally, I like the sharper angles here and uh, you know, you have a, a very good cooling. It's a, a heat pipe running from the large section here, the rear IO panel cover. It goes all the way up to this section as well. Really solid uh, solution. One of the best in class for actually um, cooling down VRMs, especially if you're doing overclocking, which is why you're buying this board probably. Yeah, exactly. And then another interesting feature of it, it has a nice back chest plate that adds a little bit of stability to it. Uh, it gives another little extra uh, cool feature on the back a as little well. bit of strength for yeah that. yeah, yeah it's, it's nice i mean you won't probably see it when it's installed in your case but you know it's there and it's uh it's helping out a little bit exactly so there you go and um but how about the active cooling oh yeah so one of the uh, really unique features of this is that it actually has a fan installed in here to keep vrm cool when we were doing the uh, i9-9900k with the last generation 390 uh, Ace motherboard, we noticed that the VRMs were getting super hot and it's not because of that board in particular, it's all Intel boards when they're running, you know, peak loads, all their VRMs get pretty hot. So it's really nice to see that, especially if you're doing overclocking and has some active cooling to try and keep that, you know, uh, reasonable as you're performing your tests. Yeah, that's nice. And lastly, the M2 heat sinks with this motherboard, they're all integrated. So you see the three different parts that with the different pieces, it all makes it integrated design, so it all kind of looks like it's it's all put together. Yeah, for the uh, you know base or entry level boards, they don't even have uh, something like this. There'll be like some some kind of small uh, cover or plate for the uh, chipset down here. But uh, yeah, all, all of these have like um, heat sink covers for all the M.2 slots, and they all work together to fit into this. It looks like one big piece, which is really nice. Yeah. So overall, we found the build quality was very good, and we really like the active fan plus heat pipe combo, which really helps to keep those VRMs cool under heavy load. Speaking of VRMs, at the jump, we mentioned that they are the best in tier, and doing our own research and checking a few other reviews also confirms this excellent performance. So if you're doing overclocking, then the MSI MEG Z490 ACE is a top pick for that. The ports included for connectivity are decent, especially with the inclusion of a Lightning 20G USB Type-C. Though we would have liked to have seen at least an onboard HDMI, that always helps us set up, though perhaps it was omitted for overclocking reasons.
It's great to see Wi-Fi 6 here and it comes with this desktop antenna as well. And for an entry level to mid-tier board, we'd be perfectly happy with 2.5 gigabit ethernet. But this is a more costly enthusiast motherboard and for the price, we would expect to see 10 gigabit ethernet on board. Granted, market adoption is so slow, but we're really pushing for this change. As more 10 gigabit motherboards hit the market, the price for 10 gig routers and switches will also come down. So we want to see this on motherboards at or above $250. We do like the M.2 heat sinks. They transfer heat decently and they're very well machined to fit in the front plate of the board. Speaking of the front plate, the design is good and nothing about MSI's design. We just wish more of it was visible with a graphics card installed. As for the chest plate, if you're doing testing, it does lift the board up and protect some connections on the back as well as providing hidden strength as it'll be facing your motherboard tray. We saw a review where they complained the heat sinks and metal had sharp edges. Well, Cupcake, perhaps building a PC isn't for you. Seriously though, sure the VRM heatsinks and metal armor do have some pokey edges, but handling the board carefully, you won't have issues. We didn't. As this is the high-end tier at just under 400 US for this motherboard, this is really aimed at enthusiasts who want to push their new 10900K or just have an excellent VRM solution with connectivity options. If you're looking to get a new Intel at 10th gen and around a budget, there are other options for each range. At 300, the Unify still has active cooling and steel armor PCIe with triple M.2, HDMI and DisplayPort, Lightning 20G and Wi-Fi 6. If you need budget Wi-Fi 6, then at 270 bucks, there's the MSI's Carbon Wi-Fi, or at $200, the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, both still retaining HDMI, DisplayPort, Lightning 20G USB, and down to two Turbo M.2 slots. For 190 bucks, we like the Z490 Tomahawk, still retaining all previous connectivity except for Wi-Fi, and the diagonal type design is unique, and the RGB reflection off the gray paint is more visible. We purchased the Z390 Tomahawk, and with daily use, we're still very impressed. Thanks again to MSI for the test setup, which allowed us to do some head-to-head -head testing that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Now, the real follow-up question to this is, should you be looking at Intel or AMD for your next build? Next up, we have some case reviews, including one that is currently under NDA, so stay tuned. If you're thinking about an Intel 10th Gen CPU for your next build, or considering the jump to AMD, we want to hear your thoughts and questions down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful. We really depend on your support, so please smash that subscribe button to keep new content coming, and be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We check the comments and try to respond to most. So if you have a question or if we missed something, then please do tell us down below. And let us know what you'd like to see next. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.